Hi everyone, welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be making the Heidi top, which is a top that comes with two different lengths and it can also be worn with either side and front. So this one is very versatile and here's how to make it. Four materials you will need. Swimwear fabric, about a half yard is good. Quarter inch swimwear elastic. You'll need a cutting tool like a rotary cutter or scissors. And the last thing you'll need is a seam ripper. We are gonna be making a hole at the last step for this tutorial. And you're also gonna need the pattern for the Hattie top. Like I said, it comes in two different lengths. So you'll wanna decide which one you wanna make, cut out your size, and then we're good to start cutting. So just like with pretty much every tutorial for a reversible swimwear, you're gonna cut two in each pattern piece and you're gonna cut one in each of your fabrics. So here I have this lighter green color. This is a ribbed fabric, it's from IC Fabrics. I will make sure to link it in the description. It's really cute, really soft, highly recommend it. So I'm gonna cut one in each pattern piece in that fabric. And then here I'm going to be cutting into this dark green fabric. This is from Blue Moon, it's one of their matte nylon spandex fabrics. I'm not sure on the color, but I will make sure to link it. And anything you get at Blue Moon, you can use code EDGEWATERAV and get a discount. So make sure to use that code next time you shop there. So in total, we will have two in each of our pattern pieces, one in my dark green, one in my light green. So the next step is going to be sewing just the neckline of this top piece. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna be doing some under stitching. And we'll get more into that in a second, but first I just want to sew that neckline. So I'm going to use a basting stitch first. This is a long straight stitch that is used to just tack the fabric together. You could use pins instead of this, but I find that the basting stitch does the best job. And in the next step, I'm going to be adding elastic. So this is just a temporary thing that I'm doing to get the fabric where I like it. And then next, I'm going to be switching over to my serger and I'm going to be attaching elastic. Before I attach that elastic, there are some pretty sharp corners. So take some scissors or little thread snippers and you're gonna cut into the seam allowance at those corners. By doing this, this is gonna allow you to feed that section through the machine in a straight line. So anytime you come across sharp corners, whether it be swimwear or just any other project, that is a great tip. Just cut into the seam allowance and then you'll be able to sew in a straight line. To attach the elastic, I'm using my elastic foot, and I'm not gonna get into everything on how to sew elastic. I have a lot of resources on that. So if you go to my channel, go to the playlist section, there is a swimwear elastic playlist, and there's a couple different how-to videos, as well as some instructions on elastic foots, feet, elastic feet, and how to find them. <laughs> And so here is how I'm able to get that straight line at that corner because it really is like almost a perfect right angle. And so you really can't sew that without cutting into it. And I am attaching elastic onto my dominant side, which I want to be this light green rib fabric. Another thing you can do to help those corners stay nice and sharp is take a straight stitch and just reinforce those corners with a straight stitch and um, just redo that right angle. So next I'm gonna be doing under stitching. This is something that is used in a lot of different sewing, but you don't really see it a lot in knits. And that's because a straight stitch is not great for knits, it might break. So here I'm gonna be doing an under stitch, but with a zigzag stitch. And so what I want to do is flip the elastic to the green side, so to the non-dominant side. And then I'm gonna be using a zigzag stitch, like I said, 
And with that zigzag stitch, I'm going to sew down the elastic onto that dark green side. So onto my lining side. And this is why we only sewed that neckline first. Had we sewed the whole thing, we wouldn't be able to access the swimsuit in this way. So I'm using a straight stitch that's about as wide as the elastic. And you do want to have a tighter, or excuse me, not a straight stitch, zigzag stitch, um, about as wide as the elastic. And you do want to have it a little on the tighter side, a little on the tighter side as far as length, because that's going to be what allows it to stretch. So as you go, just spread that fabric, make sure you're not sewing over any folds or anything. And that completes the under stitching. And so you can see the zigzag stitch is visible on the dark green side, but it's not visible on the light green side. So if you do it this way, it kind of makes it so that it's not quite reversible. The zigzag stitch doesn't look horrible on the other side, but it definitely doesn't have that like seamless um, concealed seams type of look. So you don't have to do it this way. In fact, you don't have to do anything to reinforce that neckline if you don't want to. You can make this like any other top on my channel. And so if that's something you wanna do, I can include some instructions for how to make just a basic reversible bikini top. But now we're going to flip it so it is right sides together and we're gonna sew the armholes and the bottom line. Then we can get our back piece together. Again, face right sides together. We are going to sew the armholes, the bottom line, and the little scoop back. So as always, before I do this, I'm going back in with my basting stitch. I can't emphasize this enough. This is the best tip for making your elastic application go flawless. I find it actually is faster than pins because when I use pins, sometimes I'll still mess up on the elastic and I end up having to seam rip and it just takes more time. So if you wanna learn more about basting stitches and just the way that I use it, I made a video, it's called like 2021 swimwear sewing tips and that one talks about it. So now I have the basting stitch done. I didn't show this, but I did do the basting stitch on the back piece as well. And again, I'm gonna go in with my elastic foot and attach elastic everywhere where it needs to be, which I'm gonna attach it onto the exact same seams that I showed earlier. And again, I want to attach this elastic onto the dominant side. So in my case, it's my light green fabric. This is gonna help everything sit nice and prevent as much rolling as possible. At this step, I'm also using a four thread overlock stitch. I know some gals prefer to use a three thread overlock stitch. I don't know why, I just feel most comfortable with the four thread. It feels the most secure and I feel like it's easier to sew because the settings are a bit easier to get, at least for me. Um, so yeah, this is a four thread overlock. I'm also using just regular polyester thread. You don't need anything special. So now we have all the elastic sewn. On that front piece, you can't see the elastic on the neckline and that's because we did that under stitching. So it's actually like kind of flipped over on the other side, but I promise it is there. Now we're gonna take that front piece, take it to the right side and we're eventually gonna insert it into the back piece. But first what I like to do is close up the holes that are left. So we have an opening on each of the sides and then we have an opening on each of the straps. So I'm gonna take a straight stitch and I'm just gonna sew directly on top to sew those closed. What this is gonna do is in the next step, it is gonna make it so much easier when we're sewing the front to the back piece. Instead of having to deal with four pieces of stretchy, slick fabric, 
we only really have to deal with three. So I know that sounds like it's not that big of a deal, but it actually makes a huge difference. So take the extra time, sew a straight stitch. You wanna do a long one, like a basting stitch on this. It's just enough to get that fabric so it stays in place and so that you don't have to worry about it while you're sewing in the next step. So now all the other holes are closed. We have our back piece still inside out and now we're gonna insert our front piece into our back piece. So you can do this one step at a time. I'm starting out with this strap. I'm going to align the straps, making sure right sides are together. That is why both pieces have that light green facing up. You're going to pin at the straps and then I'm gonna pull that right side through as well and just pin at that side. And then I'm gonna repeat everything with the left side. So first I'm gonna go in with that strap, make sure it's not twisted. Bring it all the way up to the opening of the outside and then pin it down. And then finally pin the last side opening. So now you can see everything is sandwiched inside. You shouldn't be able to see that front piece at all. And now to attach the two, we are gonna sew the sides and the straps. For this, I like to use a straight stitch. I find that this way I can trim the excess afterwards and it makes those seams look really flawless as soon as this piece is turned the right side. So you can just use a regular straight stitch, but I like to use what's called a secured straight stitch. It's on my machine and it basically takes two steps forward, two steps back, two steps forward, or I don't know how it exactly works, but it basically goes over it twice. So it's a really, really secure straight stitch. Um, but if you don't have that, a regular straight stitch is fine. I've used that with many, many, many of my pieces and I have yet to have a thread pop. Also during this step, mind that there is quarter inch seam allowance. And so I'm sewing exactly at the quarter inch line and this is gonna get the pattern exactly as it's intended. And it looks like I'm not back stitching, but that's because I'm using this secured straight stitch. If you are just using a regular straight stitch where it just goes over once, you will want to make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end of each seam. And so this is why it was so helpful to sew those inner two layers closed first. Now I'm just having to deal with those three layers. The inner two are fine and know they're gonna look good and I can just focus on what I'm doing in that moment. So now we can trim the excess and the last step is going to be seam ripping a hole. I like to do this in the armpit area, it's a little more discreet. So make this hole as small as you can, but still able to pull the whole suit through. So I like to make it, it's like just over an inch I'd say. And through that hole, you're gonna bring the entire suit to the right side. And something else I'm gonna do at this step, since I did a basting stitch on every single seam, I'm gonna go through and rip every single basting stitch. So this is a straight stitch that's not meant to be there permanently. It is meant to be temporary. And so you can see I'm just kind of pulling at each seam and I'm able to break that straight stitch. And you don't have to do this, but when you try it on, it's gonna get the most accurate fit. And if you're selling to someone, I would hate to you know, put on a swimsuit and immediately hear a bunch of threads rip. So definitely make sure you're either removing the basting stitch or you're ripping it like I am here. So finally, you're gonna finish off that hole. You can either use an invisible stitch by hand or you can do your machine like I am here. I'm just using a regular straight stitch on a pretty small stitch length. I like to stretch it as much as possible. That helps the seam kind of fold in to where it needs to be. And then I just go over it a couple times and make sure that that hole is completely closed. Okay. 
So that is your final step. And here is how the Heidi top turned out. And by the way, this is the classic length. There's also a long line length that goes a lot longer. And here's the top to where you flip it for making the back the front. It looks really, really good this way. So I encourage you to wear it both ways. Here's what the reverse side looks like. You can see that zigzag stitch there. Personally, not my favorite look. I think I'm just gonna be wearing this on the lighter side, but it is still technically reversible. So hope you guys try out the Heidi top. That will be linked in the description and also available at edgewaterab.com.